it's been far, far, far too long since 22 Tiger Dude and his friends have recorded an anticipated video. You could say it's been an eternity. When in reality, it's really been a year and a half. After the empty months of not going on, I am happy to say the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. Ah, uh, it feels good to be doing this again. My oh my. Hey. Hello there, everyone. This is 22 Tiger Dude here. And that's right. We're doing this again. We are confident in bringing this back because I feel enough is coming this summer to where we can actually do it. It is the top five anticipated movies for summer 2021. Yay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and uh, obviously been getting a little bit of my video mojo back since we did the Oscar predictions videos recently. And that was so cool to do again. And now it's going to feel so great to be doing this anticipated segment again. And of course, I am joined by mostly lovely folks here. I took your advice from the Oscar predictions video, Jackson. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Something I look forward to every single year with my lovely friends right over here. Tony, I, I have something to say about your intro. You said lovely people, but Kevin's here. He is not a lovely person. <laughs> no. Here's a jet oh, going yeah. by. You, 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 you. And of course, I am going to go to everyone one by one, starting off with Mr. Kevin Folk. Hello, hello. Um, it's very good to uh, be back here once again. Uh, I said that this is very similar to the uh, Oscar predictions where I said this to Tony, just getting to do things like this, you know, it feels like we're kind of like back to normalcy in a sense. Uh, there's a lot of films coming out this summer that I am actually really excited for. I'm excited to start getting more films in theaters again and things like that and uh, have over 50,000 honorable mentions. Should be a really fun time. Uh, very excited uh, for this for sure. Thank you, of course, for, for having me on. Of course, my man. Next one up here is Jackson Fulcher. Hello. Uh, I'm real tired today. These past two days, I was lifting shit for uh, my place of employment um so if if i pass out during the middle of this it's because my body has given out and my muscles will be depleted haha <laughs> you know you know no don't worry about it we'll, we'll just blame kevin instead it's okay thank you, you. thank uh, you okay. all right um very excited to not listen to kevin's honorable mentions i will be uh zoning out during that time <laughs> I don't have that many this time. I don't have that many. I don't mm -hmm. have shit. Oh, shit. We should see. We shall see. Next one up here is Film Fan 0599. It's the Joker. Hi. How, 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 how do That was horrifying. How do y'all do? <laughs> um, anywho, um, up, yeah, me. we're back at it again. It's been uh, over a year since we have done this. Um, we're, we're back at it again, folks. Um, I'm very excited about this. In all honesty, uh, there, there, there's quite a there's quite uh, there's, there's, we got quite a summer movie season, you know. So I, I do think we have quite a, quite a few movies to uh, to talk about here, and um, I'm very excited to uh, share my list with uh, most of you. And I use the keyword most of you. Um, but um, but in all seriousness though i am really excited though to uh give you my list and um jackson you weren't were you not uh banned from a buffalo wild wings this time no 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 i'm i'm, I'm good now i can i can go back to buffalo wild wings um it's chilies that i've caused trouble this time but uh, ah, it was, for, it was for streaking oh. I, I went streaking it was not it, i would not recommend um but chilies i would recommend ah i see i see <laughs> All right, well, that's all I got. Um, go to Caden. <laughs> Next one up is Caden the Plant, aka Auburn Wanderer. Hi, everyone. Oh, it's it's Cody from Big Brother Twenty Two. Oh no! Shut the oh fuck yeah, up. boy, you know it. <laughs> now listen, listen. There we go. So, listen. Oh, wait, wait. There we go. Now listen. It's interesting because the last time. Uh, 
y'all did this. I wasn't here for it, but the thing that was funny about it was that Kevin was in my house. Yeah, <laughs> that is very true. That's a very yeah, yeah, iconic. I, 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 like, 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 Jesus. I think I made, like, I made like a quick cameo. I don't know if it made the final cut. This bitch is at my house. The guy got to say something first. Oh, hi. I'm not going to be joining this one what because, the like film fans said, this this these few months. No, no, I'm done. I'm quitting. I'm out. I'm out. So they hit an RKO. <laughs> uh, I love all of you, especially you, film fan. You're a beautiful fan. Goodbye. All right. Hey, guys, it's me, Kevin, again. Now that that bitch is gone, let's get to the real deal here. But, uh, yeah, we're here. Uh, I'm back. You know, I, I guess, you know, unfortunately, looking back, me not joining for that might not have been that unfortunate after all, uh, in the sense that, like, you know, it uh, the films that I was looking forward to, I wasn't, like, as disappointed as I was that they didn't come out. Uh, but, you know, like like Tony mentioned, you know, the fact that we can do this again and like we can be confident that the films we're going to talk about are coming out, you know, after all that, you know, this world has been through in the past year. And, um, you know, you know, throughout the summer, you know, basically a year and a half or so, you know, is like a fucking miracle. Uh, so, um, yeah, so I'm, ha I'm happy to be here um, with, with, with most of y'all. So, uh, yeah. Fuck you. Thanks for having me on. Next one up, joining us for the first time in this segment is Henry Ewing. All right, folks, what's down? My name is Kevin, and I am 11. Yes. I mean, mentally, and maybe. Maybe. I'm here to talk about the best movie <laughs> ever, The Kissing Booth 3. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yes. Get that shit off my screen. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Look at that! Oh no! That's my favorite thing to watch on Disney Plus. Yes. <laughs> uh, I, I I was there for that. Oh my favorite ever. movie! Oh god, not Dougal. Remember when we watched Google. that? Oh no! Do you have anything Google. good? Now Henry, I don't want. to There we go. Google. There we go. No. Oh my god. <laughs> That works too. The amazing book. All right. Now that now he's you're back in your natural habitat. Yes. And now last. And now last. Period. But not <laughs> least is Andrew Hayes, Next aka guest. the Duck. Hi guys, my name is Andrew, also known as the Duck. Um, I'm going to pretend like I didn't make my list two seconds before I got onto this call. And <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's all I got to say for this, because. All right, everyone, now that we've got all that out of the way, are we all ready to do our honorable mention? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, no, Kevin, shut up. OK, so my honorable mentions in no particular order are. The Loud House movie. I keep hearing that movie's gonna come in the summer, so in case it does, I will include that. Wrath of Man. Spiral, Perilla, Here Today, Free Guy, Old, Polto Transylvania, Transformania, F9, Vivo, and the one I'd say was close to my top five is Luca. So those are my honorable mentions. And now everyone, the one I know that we have not missed, it's been a meme, but this guy's going to go ahead and do it anyways. Kevin's honorable mention. All right. So as usual, I do it's have deep. a pretty, I, I do have quite a few honorable mentions here. Uh, in no particular order, though, we have Monster, Mainstream, Oxygen, Spiral, The Killing of Two Lovers, The Woman in the Window, Riders of Justice, Army of the Dead, New Order, Cruella, the Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, Vivo, The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard, False Positive, Zola, Space Jam and New Legacy, The Night House, Free Guy, Coda, Candyman, Beckett, Reminiscence, and my 10 through 6, because I always got to have that. Uh, number 10, we have F9, The Fast Saga. Uh, number 9 is Respect. Number 8 is Those Who Wish Me Dead. Number 7 is Old. And number 6, the one that came very close but did not make it, Black Widow. Name any other movie that's coming out this year, because that's kind of... There were some I didn't mention. I didn't mention fucking Paw Patrol. Take it, Jackson, who looks like he wants to end his life. 
There weren't as many as some other ones. Wow. Well, Jackson, I guess um, it's your time to do the other one. I guess it is. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> I will not subject you to that much torture. Uh, I've got Those Who Wish Me Dead, Luca, The Night House, Spiral, The Conjuring, Part 3, Candyman, The Woman in the Window, very close, um, and then In the Heights, uh, just missed it. Wow. F9. That's it. That's or like that's SU. It. What the fuck? What? Man, fuck you. That was funny, guys. It was. It was oh, not. Guys, shut up. That was the worst joke ever. More like F you. Bro, I could have said that when you said F9, but I didn't because it was stupid. Film fan, it's your turn. Oh, God. All right. Um, <laughs> hello. All right. Here are my uh what we call the honorable mentions all right in in in, in no particular order we, we have wrath of man um we have spiral we have the conjuring the devil made me do it we have army of the dead we have the the green knight and uh oh shit that's it <laughs> oh wow nice nice beautiful beautiful short and sweet Kaden, it's your time to shine oh yeah boys okay let me get my list up okay i would like to apologize in advance uh i do have uh, a, a few honor honorable mentions um you know uh i think some people will be surprised that some of these did not make my top five but here we go all right i try to do it in order of release day for these okay mainstream spiral woman in the window corella a quiet place oh. part two i'm sorry kevin but in the heights it didn't make the top five uh, Luca, F9, uh, the Fast Saga, whatever the fuck it's called, um, America, the Motion Picture, Black Widow, uh, Snake Eyes, uh, G.I. Joe, Joe, Joe Origins, The Suicide Squad, Coda, Respect, Candyman, and Beckett. Thank you very much. Next one up is Henry, your honorable mentions. All right. My honorable mentions are The Green Knight, Zola, Free Guy, Army of the Dead, F9, Mainstream, The Night House, and my number six would be Space Jam, A New Legacy. Your turn, Andrew. All right. Uh, my honorable mentions include uh, A Quiet Place Part Two, Black Widow, Cruella, Woman in the Window, Space Jam, A New Legacy, and Spiral. Now that we got our honorable mentions out of the way, it's crazy to say this again. Let's get to our top five. Yes. Oops. Good boy. All right. So for my number five, it's going to be The Green Knight. This is a movie I have been very, very excited for for a long time, but obviously due to the pandemic, they had to push it and it no longer came out last year they have to find a release date but now it is it's going to be a summer release which is really cool i think it was originally supposed to be a may release for last year i could be wrong there though um but yeah i think it's coming out in july now which is really cool since that's my birthday month and i just think it looks really interesting it's from david lowry who also directed a ghost story and peach dragon and this one looks really cool it's like this fantasy movie Filmmaking wise, it looks really interesting, but you also have a really great cast. You have Dev Patel in there, you have Joel Edgerton in there, Alicia Vikander in there. I just look forward to seeing this vision that David Lowry has for this movie. So there's not a whole lot I can say about it, but I know the trailer has really intrigued me ever since. And hopefully, after waiting extra long for it to come out, it'll definitely live up. So that is my number five, The Green Knight. Uh, wow, Tony, we are thinking on the exact same page right now because my number five is also uh, The Green Knight. Uh, pretty much what you said, this is a film that I've been looking forward to for a long time now. Uh, David Lowry is a director that I have a lot of respect for. I adore things like a ghost story and things like that. And what I really like about this film is that you can see that he really is kind of challenging himself. It looks 
easily like his most ambitious work yet. Uh, one thing that I that you didn't mention is that I'm pretty sure this is one of the um, it might be the highest budgeted uh, film in terms of indie releases. So I think that's oh, really yeah. cool. I did hear about that. Yeah, there's there's a lot that's still unknown about this movie. We don't exactly know a lot of what it's about. You know, it centers around this this night of sorts and he goes on this quest. But I've heard a lot of interesting details. It seems like it's going to go in some really weird directions. And knowing A24, that's to be expected. It's going to get weird. It's going to get complex. It's probably going to get really deep. And I am definitely here for it. And what a cast, too. I mean, from Dev Patel to Joe, Joel Edgerton to Alicia Vikander. I mean, just there's so many things to look forward to when it comes to this movie. Like I said, there's not a ton I can say about it because we've really just had that teaser, but it's one of those teasers where whenever it plays, I am completely locked in and I get so excited to see what this film is really going to turn out to be. I'm so excited that it's finally coming out and uh, just really hoping it, will it lives up to the hype. So definitely number five, The Green Knight. So my number five, uh, this is actually a surprise for me because usually I'm not really excited for these kind of movies, but... This Disney live action remake, I am. It's Cruella. Um, very excited for this. I was not originally because I was like, oh, what what can Disney do with like a, a dog killer movie? Like they can't. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like what, what can they possibly do that's interesting? And these trailers that have come out have really won me over and learning more about like who's creatively involved. Somehow I uh, did not know that much going in, but someone who worked on The Favorite and The Great is writing the screenplay. It's directed by the guy who did Itania. Uh, it's going to be scored by Nicholas Bertel, who's excellent, you know, and just it's got an amazing cast, great cinematography. It looks really interesting. And I think, you know, it, it, I don't want to say it's going to be like Disney's Joker or anything. Obviously not. That's stupid. Um, but I think this is like Disney's attempt to get like as close to like uh, something a little more. I want to say like grounded and, and like very interesting as opposed to like what they did with like Maleficent, which is like a. Uh, the the promise of that premise was you know we're going to watch the bad guy but they're like well she's actually just misunderstood she's actually good and it's like you just betrayed the premise this is like now nah, we're going to go all in with this complicated bitch which is wonderful uh i'm very excited emma stone is obviously one of the greatest actresses living today so very excited to see her perform as cruella i think she's gonna kill it she's great so is emma thompson great great everyone's great yay all right, film fan. This complicated bitch. Only you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> anyway, um, but no, uh, my number five uh, might come as a surprise for some people, but uh, my number five is old. Um, I am really excited about this movie. Um, you know, I've been enjoying um, a lot of M. Night Shyamalan's movies that have been coming out in the last few years and stuff like that. And I think the premise of this sounds really cool. And I really love the trailer a lot. I really, it just, it just looks so just creepy. And just, just the fact that like, is the, everyone's just getting older, but like, it just seems very interesting. And it just seems really weird to me. And I'm really excited to see how this premise is executed. I think this has a lot of potential. And like I said, I've been enjoying a lot of the stuff that M. Night Shyamalan has been doing uh, as of late, especially with Glass, which I really, really loved a lot. So I hope that uh, this movie sticks the landing because it really has a lot of promise, in my opinion. And I think it looks really fantastic. So, yeah, I'm really excited about this. And uh, it comes in as my number five. All right, y'all. Here we go, y'all. Are y'all ready for my top five? All right, here we yes. go. Of course. Number this, five. On the edge of my seat. Here we go. Number five is Army of the Dead. Yes, yes. Right. Listen, Zack Snyder is the fucking boy, okay? And I am very excited to see him making another film and so soon after completing the Snyder Cut. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm excited to see him do something again, you know, a bit more, you know, zombie related for him, you know, um, I love the cast. I love how the aesthetics look of the film, um, which is always important for a Snyder film because I love his aesthetic direction that he goes for. Um, and it just looks like a lot of like fun and stuff and just really interesting and, you know, very like engaging and stuff. And, uh, yeah, you know, I've, you know, I really, I've really grown, you know, and I always have, like, I've really grown to, like, respect Zack Snyder for the past two years, and I'm just really excited to see him making another movie again like this. Um, I hope I can see it in theaters, too. 
Uh, and uh, yeah, no, I'm just really excited for it. And that is why it is my number five. Woo! All right. Yeah. Now, Taco Bell, you eat. Yes. My number five is also M. Night Shyamalan's Old. The trailer for this came out around the Super Bowl, and it looked really cool. And I do like Glass and Split a lot, especially Glass. And, yeah, the concept is really cool. It's, like, something I'd be into. And the cast, you got Gael Garcia Bernal, Vicky Creeps, Alex Wolf, Thomason McKenzie, and Eliza Scanlon, to name a few. And this actually comes out the day after my birthday, which is pretty cool. So, yeah. My number five is The Green Knight. Um, I'm not, honestly, I haven't really been the biggest fan of David Lowry's previous work. Pete Dragon was fun, but I really, really wasn't a fan of a ghost story. Um, so, like, when I saw this trailer, I was genuinely surprised on how much I enjoyed it and how, like, interested I instantly was in seeing this movie. And when it got pushed back, I was really, really bummed out because, like, the, what I like about this, like, the trailer and, like, I, Kevin, I believe, mentioned it, is, like, we don't know much, but, like, that's, like, a big reason why, like, mm -hmm. I'm so interested is because of, um, you know, how little we don't know. And um, I'm very excited to see it. Uh, Dev Patel is an actor um, who has really come in his own over the past uh, few years, which is uh, very nice to see. Um, and then, uh, you know, I always got to support my boy, uh, Joel. So, yeah, uh, now my number five is uh, The Green Knight. All right, everyone. Now let's get to our number four. So my number four is Army of the Dead. I am really, really looking forward to this one, honestly. I am honestly a fan of Zack Snyder's work. I love his vision, the visual spe spectacle he brings. is just very unique. I believe this is going to be his first non-DC movie he has directed since Sucker Punch, which is a decade ago, crazy thing. But I think that's the last time he's directed a movie that did relate to any of the DC movies. So I'm looking forward to seeing him not just only do another zombie movie because of, you know, Dawn of the Dead. I like the idea of us being like this heist movie, um, but also a zombie movie at the same time. The marketing has just sold me. I love the teaser. I love the full trailer. Saw the full trailer again when I went to go see Nobody earlier and that excited me even more to even see that trailer on the big screen. So, and then obviously you got Dave Batista. You can't go wrong with him. And because 22 Tiger, dude, you know, I got to support Zombie Tiger. I'm just really looking forward to Army of the Dead, honestly. And that's why it is my number four. Wow, you broke the streak. I thought we were going to have the same number four as well. But uh, I digress. Uh, my number four is uh, Luca. And uh, yeah, this is one that I've been excited for for a while. I mean... Uh, Pixar in general, usually when they have an original film coming out, I get really excited for it because that's really when I feel like Pixar is at its best. Well, either that or a Toy Story sequel, but I feel like they really are at their best when it comes to these original films. And what I especially like about Luca is that it looks different, not just in terms of like story, but in terms of animation, like the animation on the humans, especially uh, is very different than say the animation on the Incredibles. It's honestly really incredible the way they were able to uh, do that. That did not mean to make that pun, of course. Hey, um, I see what you did there. However, um, I, I think that this film in general uh, seems like it's going to be something really special. I love the idea that we have these characters, but they actually are like sea creatures and they have to like try to like suppress this ability uh, from everyone else in uh, in like the Italian Riviera. I think that's a, a really fun idea. And I'm sure like a lot of Pixar films, it's going to dive into some some really deep stuff, you know, when it comes to the coming of age stuff and a great cast too. I mean, Jacob Tremblay, 
play never fails to deliver a really good performance and Jack Dylan Grazer as well Maya Rudolph Jim Gaffigan uh just really excited for this one it looks very imaginative and it's one of those things where you know people always say like Pixar has done everything they can possibly do and I feel like this is yet another thing that they have not tackled yet and I'm very excited to see how it really does turn out I hate the fact that it's going to be on only Disney plus because I think this film would have been amazing to see in theaters but just the fact we're getting it alone that definitely does have me very excited so definitely number four Luca my number four is the Green Knight um as far as David Lowry goes um uh, old man the gun is solid Peach Dragon, I think, is solid, too. A Ghost Story, I feel like I would, I'd appreciate more now, but back when I saw it, I wasn't a big fan for obvious reasons. Uh, it's not for everyone. It's a little weird, a little artsy. Um, but this movie, The Green Knight, looks excellent. Uh, the trailer, the, the production design, the, the visual aesthetics, it looks fucking incredible if i'm being honest it was one of those trailers that when i watched it i was like oh it's an a24 movie let's see what it what it's all about and watching that trailer play out was like oh my god this looks this looks epic it looks great uh you got a great cast Joel Edgerton, alicia vikander and deb patel i think they're gonna kill it um i even though i found um old man in the gun and peach dragon just solid i think this material could probably make for a really really strong movie so i'm really excited to see what uh this director can do with that i think already from what they've shown he has knocked a good majority of it out of the park at least uh, as far as like the cinematography and like the the design work and all that goes so uh, yay for that my number four is uh, the Suicide Squad. Um, I am very much looking forward to this movie. Um, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a big fan of James Gunn's work in like the Guardians films, and honestly, adding what he's done with those movies with kind of a much more like it, a much more insane batch of characters, and you know, obviously having the R rating and stuff like that. I think it's gonna be something quite crazy and i'm really looking forward to seeing how he handles these characters and you know um how he handles this world this this very chaotic world where a bunch of bad guys are teaming up with together and stuff like that i think it looks really cool i i you know the, the red band trailer didn't really do much for me but i did like the other trailer that they put out i thought that was a lot better in my opinion i just hope the humor I, uh, that's my only really worry with this movie is that I just hope the humor just like it's just a bit better than it was in the trailers. But um, but other than that, I think this looks really great. The action sequences look very fun. Um, you got my boy, you can't see me, John Cena in it. You know, yeah, that's always great. You know, um, he 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 appears on my list twice. I'll just I'll just say that for the least. But um, but yeah, uh, it's it's great to see him in this, and uh, you know, Idris Elba, Margot Robbie coming back as Harley Quinn. You know, I, I'm just excited to see these batch of characters and seeing how mm -hmm. they'll be played onto screen. Honestly, I think it looks like a lot of fun. I'm very excited for it. So, um, yeah, that's what comes in as my number four, The Suicide Squad. Whoa. My number four is The Green Knight. Yes, represent Jackson. All right, yeah. now listen. Listen, represent. listen, listen, y'all. So the only film I have seen, um, what's it, David Lowry? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, the only film I've seen from him is A Ghost Story, which I have a very weird relationship Ooh. with that movie because I watched it back in 2017 and I thought it was really bad. But then I decided to rewatch it in 2018 and I thought it was an incredible film. Um, so I've been excited to see his follow-up and he's doing another film with A24, which is exciting. Um, and there has been a oh. lot of press about this film. Um, you know, like that it's like either like really graphic or like the budget is really high for like an indie film. Uh, the cast is really cool. Um, you know, it seems like it's like a more, a more it's a bit more longer than some of his other works he's been doing. This is definitely one that I'm I'm happy is going to be in theaters only. A24 has already said that. I'm excited to see him do something more like, I guess, fantasy or kind of like epic sort of scopey stuff because he's done that before in a little bit of like with Peach Dragon. You know, obviously his baby does like gigantic in terms of like the scope like this will be, but you know, it has... You know, I, I feel like, you know, he's coming into his own even more as a director. And uh, I'm really excited to see what 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 he does with uh, this film. And I can't and I wait to see it. All right. My number four is from acclaimed director Pisney Dixar. It's Luca. <laughs> oh, shit. Let's go. Same one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this one. 
I usually love Pixar's movies, like Soul, I thought was fantastic. And this one looks really good. Like the animation looks amazing as usual. Like it reminds me of like Call Me By Your Name and We Are Who We Are a bit. And I actually didn't know this till now, but Jacob Tremblay and Jack Dylan Grazer are the main characters. That's mm-hmm. really cool. And it's actually a directorial debut, so I'm very interested in that. And it's unfortunate that it's not going to be in theaters, but Disney Plus, here we come. Come June. Uh, my number four is also Luca. Um Purely based off of uh, the fact that, you know, Disney slash Pixar, other than, you know, the Cars movies, very, very consistent. And not only, like, it's just consistently great, especially with their original stuff, uh, especially with the original stuff as of late, you know, with, like, Coco and Soul. And um, even though Inside Out was more than, like, five years ago, I'll, I'll, I'll include Inside Out. But, like, s- still, like... They're just consistently great. Like, and as much as I do, um, was excited for something like Toy Story Four, or like Incredibles Two. The original stuff is where I think uh, Pixar really excels. That's pretty much what I got to say because Kevin and Henry stole the words right out of my mouth. We're gonna go ahead and go to number three. The fact that Mermaid Man and Clifford the Big Red Dog are just next to each other is truly a blessing. My number three is going to be Black Widow. That's another one that I think all of us have waited way, way too long to come out. It's finally going to come out. It's coming out in July. It's just something that's been very exciting because I know we've wanted a Black Widow movie for a long time. It's something she should have gotten a long time ago. And obviously, I think Scarlett Johansson is going to do a really great job. You know, she's already proven to be a really great lead actress. And... I think Black Widow will be no different. I think she'll be really, she'll do a really great job in the movie, but also we have really great additions like Florence Pugh or, you know, David Harbour or Rachel Weisz. Like you have a really great cast here and the action, it looks very well directed. It obviously looks like it's going to be more in that style of like the Winter Soldier, Civil War, and, you know, most recently the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, this more spy espionage kind of style. And um, I just hope it definitely lives up to that. It looks like we're going to get like really good character work with Black Widow as well. Maybe dive more into her past. So, yeah, uh, honestly, I'm just really excited to see when finally coming out. And that's why Black Widow is indeed my number three. So my number three, I feel like is pretty fitting, considering that like the last anticipated video we did, this, I believe, was either Mm -hmm. my number one or two. And it's still pretty high here, um, which shows you how much I've been like eagerly anticipating it we're finally getting it number three is a quiet place part two um i've pretty much said everything i can in regards to my anticipation level for this movie so i'm gonna keep it pretty short because you probably heard what i said in the Mm -hmm. last his video but in case you didn't it's it's one of those sequels that i was struggling for a while whether or not we really needed it but with the trailers and everything that's come out it really seems like this film is going to expand the world in a really interesting way kind of show us how the rest of the world is affected by you know these creatures and things like that and also you know showcase case uh new characters killian murphy's character especially looks really intriguing here and just in general i think this looks like the kind of sequel that we really do need i think this is going to uh heighten my love for this well now franchise uh even more than i already did just counting the days until it's finally come out it's crazy that like it was supposed to come out back in march and then everything happened and we've had to wait so long so i'm so happy that it's finally coming out my hype has not dwindled one bit, uh, and I'm just so hyped to finally see it. So definitely number three, Quiet Place Part 2. Yep. Uh, my number three is also a Quiet Place Part 2. Um, Period, this... yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, I really love the first a Quiet Place movie. I think it's really well done. And now that, oh, um, spoilers, 
John Krasinski is not in the second one. It's oh going to be really exciting to see him just like fully behind the. Well, okay, there's a flashback scene. Never mind. But for the majority of the movie, he'll be like mostly behind the camera. And I, I'm wondering if it'll be like the same because his directing was really surprisingly great for that first movie. I'm wondering if it'll be like same level or if he's going to up his game, do some more uh, clever, unique stuff. I, I'm I'm really excited to see what they do here because the trailer they do have it's kept very vague, although promising a lot more as far as experience expanding the world and maybe uh, clearing up some some of the gaps that maybe were maybe left in the first movie. Um, but I, yeah, I'm really excited for it. I, I feel like when it was announced, I was like, oh, we don't need a second one. But when I started to think about it more, I was like, well, actually, you know, the way the story, it's not totally done, you know, so I, I'm really excited to see where else they take this. Um, uh, Emily Blunt will probably kill it, of course, and Killian Murphy and Jamon Hunsu. Hey, they're great actors as well. And hey, them kids be back. That's neat. Oh, there's a baby. Baby can't act. That's the end of my segment. Baby Don't put baby in the corner. <laughs> You're right. Hello, bitches. All right. So my number three um, is um, I, I have to sing a little tune before I have to sing a little tune for this. Come on and slam. Welcome to the jam. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. That's the Black Widow theme. theme? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, but um, no. In all seriousness, though, my number three is uh, Space Jam: A New Legacy. Um, I am really excited about this movie. Um, I really enjoyed the first one a lot. It's a big childhood favorite of mine. So when um, so when I uh, heard about this, uh, heard about the sequel, and you know, uh, uh, King James was going to be the uh, the lead star this time around, I was very interested to see what they could do. Um, at first I was a little mixed about the trailer, but the more I keep on watching it, the more, I can't lie, the more I, I kind of like get into it. So I'm really excited about this. I think this could be a really fun sequel and they could really do something uh, very unique and creative with this. And I'm really excited about, about it. it. It looks really fun. Honestly, I am really excited. Um, you know, it seems like LeBron James is going to have the time of his life and it, it just looks great. I, I'm, I'm very excited about it. So, uh, uh, yeah, that's my number three, Space Jam, A New Legacy. You know, it's very interesting because my number three is also Space Jam, A New Legacy. Let's go! Let's fucking go! <laughs> Listen, I don't give a fuck what anyone the only says. That I am hyped for this goddamn movie. Listen, I have been waiting years for this fucking movie, okay? I've been waiting years. This movie's been in development hell for so long fucking long and it's finally happening y'all with lebron james all right and you know i'm just really excited you know i personally like the trailer sure it you know the whole thing about them like literally using every single Warner Brothers ip to influence the plot like even a fucking clockwork orange sure i get it it's a, it's very corporate-y and you know i'm not gonna deny that but like listen i still think it looks fun I like the new villains that they fucking have with fucking like Damian Lillard and Anthony Davis and like Clay Thompson, all those fucking people. Like, 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 like that shit's dope as fuck to me. And so, like, you know, like I'm fucking ready. I'm fucking ready. And LeBron looks great. He looks really good, honestly. So, you know, I I'm excited. I am fucking hyped. I'm seeing this in theaters. I don't give a fuck. I'm fucking ready. Okay. I'm gonna, we're gonna fucking do we all. We're gonna go with Slam. Let's go. All right, my number three is Black Widow, because yeah. I, I do really like the Black Widow character in the MCU. I think Scarlett Johansson does a good job playing her, and I'm really interested to see what this one's about, because we got Florence Pugh, David Harbour, and Rachel Weisz, all of whom are great actors, and I'm excited to see what they do here and maybe see more of them in the future in the MCU. But yeah. My number three is uh, say my name, say my name, Candyman. I'm very excited for this one. Uh, the trailer is so fucking good. I think it's honestly, um, well, the trailer came out last year, but it's one of the, the best trailers to come out of last year. And again, like with uh, The Green Knight, I was very fucking bummed when this got delayed because just of how excited I was for it. 
Um, I have not seen the original, but that, that still doesn't like change my excitement level for this. The, the trailer just got me all hyped and shit. That's all I got to say. Nothing, nothing really special for this one. Now let's go ahead and get into our number two. So my number two, I had to put the star movie on this list because if I'm going to be honest, it would be a goddamn crime if I didn't. Space Jam, A New Legacy, bitches. I am so excited. I'm going to be honest, this is a sequel. I did not think I ever needed in my life because, uh, you know, the first one is something nostalgic for me. You know, it's a childhood classic. I can understand it's not everyone's thing because it's like really cheesy and all that. But, you know, it's something that genuinely makes me happy. But it's not something I ever imagined would get a sequel per se. But now that it is getting a sequel, and especially after watching that trailer when it drops, I am honestly really excited. It looks like they're going to keep with the spirit of, you know, the original, which I like. But they're also going to give it like a modern spin with all of these like Warner Brothers pop properties that are going to appear in the movie. And I'm just really excited to see how they're going to do that. LeBron James looks like he's going to have a lot of fun here, like with Michael Jordan, the original. And um, I don't know if it's going to happen, but if a Michael Jordan cameo can at least happen the sequel, that would be amazing. Just wanted to put that out there. But yeah, it's not only going to be exciting to see a Space Jam sequel, but to even see the Looney Tunes characters on the big screen again. Because, you know, I could never go wrong with like Bugs Bunny or Daffy Duck or really any of the characters. That's why it's really high up on my list. And that's why it's my number two because come on, it's Slam. And welcome to the jam. <laughs> All right. So, my number two, uh, this is another film that I've been looking forward to for such a long time now. Uh, it's The Suicide Squad. Uh, look, the idea of getting to do the suicide squad again is something that does excite me because i did see a lot of potential in that first suicide squad movie i was very much hyped for it there's obviously a lot of problems with that film but i did see a lot of potential in what they were trying to do and now having someone like james gunn take over who i think is way more in line to direct something that's this weird and out there for the DCU and really just kind of do whatever the fuck he wants, um, I think is a brilliant idea. And it really seems like they're going, going all out with this one. Uh, obviously, yes, this is going to be more of a soft reboot, but, you know, the characters that worked in the first movie are still there, like obviously Harley Quinn and things like that. But even some of the characters we saw in the first movie, like Rick Flagg, for example, is completely different here. He's just like, he's... He's not the sarcastic, you know, brooding character he was in the first one here. He's just like, he's just a goofball. And I love it. I love every second of it. And then the new additions as well. John Cena as Peacemaker, especially, seems like he's going to steal the whole movie. And I can't wait to see what he's going to do here. Idris Elba, I, I think, is going to do some really great work, too. And just the costume designs alone are just so wacky and out there. And I just love every second of it. And I mean... The fucking villain in this movie is going to be a fucking starfish. Like, it just doesn't get weirder and quirkier than that. And I feel like this is everything that the Suicide Squad should have really been. I honestly, I might be in a minority, but I love the humor in the trailers. I love how just ridiculous it really is. I think there's a lot of great lines. Um, and I'm definitely very much hyped for this one. Uh, the closer we get to it, the more hyped I really am. And, you know, it's one of those things where we've heard about Gunn taking this on for a while, and it seemed like it was a long ways away. And the fact we're finally getting it uh, just has me so incredibly excited. So definitely Suicide Squad is my number two. Please don't disappoint me this time. <laughs> Oh shit! Sorry, I, I know I'm boring. It's okay. Long fucking ramble. Jesus. Oh, just wait for my number one. <laughs> oh my god. All right, better get ready to Envy sleep. Now. Again. I'll grab. I'll be here for like twenty minutes. <laughs> my number two is another comic book film, but not DC though. Uh, suck it, DC. Ha ha. I'm sorry. That's stupid. It's wow. Black Widow. Um, th this more than like a lot of Marvel movies, I guess. Uh like the it's taking like a little bit more like obviously it's going to get big as we've seen in the trailers but it's also taking like more of like an espionage more grittier um fighting style that probably uh winter soldier and uh, civil war falcon and the winter soldier had uh which excites me but i'm also really excited because black widow has been around forever and it took her spoilers 
dying in Avengers Endgame to finally get a fucking God. movie, which is ridiculous, if I'm being honest. But, you know, if that's what it took, I guess. Uh, it'll be great to see her at least one last time um, and hopefully really own this movie. I think they, especially for her character, her backstory, I think they'll really have something that's really strong, the material here, the uh, dynamic between her and her uh, sister, played by Florence Pugh. I'm sure uh, there's going to be a lot, like, not just like, hey, you know, we're siblings and we're joking around, yuckety yuck. Like, it'll probably, there'll be like an actual dr dramatic tension there. There'll be like a... Uh, uh, character arcs they'll have to overcome and, and like trauma they'll have to confront and that really excites me uh the more personal side of this story like Rachel Weisz and David Harbour being there is really exciting Ray Winstone who I don't remember seeing in any of the trailers but he's in it can't wait to see that bastard I guess um and uh Thunderbolt Ross from the Incredible Hulk what a guy is Robert Downey Jr. there who knows I, I have no idea but um I'm really excited to see because it's uh, the action looks incredible I'm not sure if this director has done any big action before or like even like low budget action but it looks really great so far it's it's another MCU movie but this one personally kind of gets me excited because I've, I've been wanting to see a story like this for a while and it looks like they're going down the correct path with it so very, very, very excited. And if Florence Pugh is the Black Widow for like the rest of the MCU, that'd be really exciting because I really love Florence Pugh. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but I'm a really big fan of Florence Pugh. I named my car after Florence Pugh after I saw Midsummer. Midsummer is one of my favorite movies of 2019. Really love Florence Pugh. That's the end of my segment oh, on Black also, Widow. Jackson, not, not to interrupt, but I know you're also a big fan of that movie. You, I, and Kevin watched that malevolent movie on that. Oh, God. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I forgot about okay, that. You know what? Not that one, but everything else. Yeah. <laughs> Cut you uh, you're thinking the Super Bowl. Where you say Florence Pugh like 50 times. You want you want me to keep going? All right. Florence Pugh, Florence Pugh, Florence Pugh. <laughs> Cut. Cut to the next person. God damn it. Anyways, uh, yeah, we all know why Jackson put Black Oil at number two. Uh, anyways. Uh, what are you trying uh, to imply? How dare you? I did everything anyway. for you. <laughs> Uh, anyway. uh, anyways my number two uh is uh those who wish me dead um i am very very excited about this movie i uh, might come as a surprise that's this high on my list but i love action thrillers like these this definitely looks like an action thriller that is up my alley um i am a big fan of uh taylor sheridan um he is a fantastic uh writer and director too so, um, you know, I love his writing and stuff like Sicario and, you know, uh, Hello High Water. And I loved his directorial debut, Wind River. So I am very excited to see where this goes. Um, you know, the trailer was really great. It has a fantastic cast to it. You know, Angelina Jolie, John Barenthal, Nicholas Hull. You know, so it, it looks really fantastic, honestly. I am really Really excited about this. Also, this comes out the day after my birthday, so that's a plus. I hope it doesn't disappoint me. And uh, yeah, that's, so that's what comes at number two for me is those who wish me uh, dead. My number two is M. Night Shyamalan's Old. Yes, it is my number two. I think some people might be surprised this isn't my number one because I've, I've been very public about it for like, over like half a decade now, I think M. Night Shyamalan is still a top five director working today. I know it's a hot take, but I still think he's a he's a genius. Um, if people don't know, The Village, I, I've said many times, but The Village is one of my favorite movies ever made. I don't care. I defend that movie all fucking day if I have to. Fuck you, Kevin. Um, the Sixth Sense is also a masterpiece. And I thought Glass was like one of like the best comic book film based superhero stuff, whatever you want to call it, like I've, I've ever seen. Um, and so the so he's not following it up with like uh, going kind of going back to sort of like like a really like original uh, film, um, you know, like after um, The Visit, you know, this is kind of like, you know, his first one uh, since then. Um, and, uh, I'm really excited about it, obviously on that Super Bowl spot that came out just looked so just visceral and intense and so eerie and just so creepy. And that's something that Shyamalan is a fucking master at, in my opinion. Like that's part of what I love about the village so much is like, you know, at the end of the day, it's like a romance film, but like the eerie stuff to it is also so great. And like, he's, he's, he, and he does that stuff so well, like in the visit, that movie terrifies me. And so like, he does the horror aspect so well. So he's doing it here, but it looks like it's gonna be more grossy. Also more, maybe a bit gorier. It's probably gonna be peachy for team, but still, it looks like it's gonna be pushing it a bit more. 
Um, and I'm really excited for it. You know, the concept is something that he hasn't done when he, and I follow him on Twitter and social media, obviously. And he was tweeting when making this film that he's never made a movie like this before. Um, and he's really pushing himself because it's all like on location. Um, you know, they use like some natural lighting apparently and just like stuff like that using like these like really like interesting camera rigs. Um, and it's really cool to see Shyamalan at a point in his career like this, that where he's pushing himself like this. Um, and I'm really, really excited. This is an obvious day one opening night for me uh, film. Um, I really love Shyamalan. Um, you know, he, he is one of my favorite directors of all time. Um, and I still think he's a very inspiring person. And I'm really excited to see him making a film like this. Uh, and I, I so I can't wait. Uh, that's why it is my number two. All right. My number two is The Suicide Squad. The, the original from 2016 was kind of not very good, but this one looks much better. Is you still got Margot Robbie as Harley Quinn, one of my favorite recent performances in comic book movie. But this time we got some many new cast members like Idris Elba, John Cena, got Pete Davidson, Storm Reed, Nathan Fillion, Taika Waititi, and last but certainly not least, we got Sylvester Stallone as motherfucking King Shark. <laughs> yeah. And we got James Gunn writing and directing who as we all know, did the Guardians movies, which are great movies. They have a lot of heart and humor, and hopefully those are brought here. I'm looking forward to it. All right, my number two is uh, also The Suicide Squad. Um, what I um, find kind of ironic, I just want to point this out, is that people really criticized the first one for trying too hard to be like Guardians of the Galaxy and now we have James Gunn directing it. This is something I just noticed now and I just wanted to point that out. Um, but anyway, um, again, like I was very excited like most people for uh, the, the one back in 2016 and it was very disappointing. Uh, it, it's definitely in contention for the most disappointing movie I've ever seen in my life. Um, and this, I think, obviously has the potential to be better, uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, the DC finally got their fucking shit together and they've been on a roll. Like they've been like with Shazam and Birds of Prey and, uh, Wonder Woman and, uh, Aquaman. They, they just been kind of killing it. And, um, I think J James Gunn obviously cares about the source material, he knows what he's doing. I just can't wait to see what he has in store. And you know what? I can't wait for James Gunn to absolve David Ayer's sins. All right, y'all. Uh, I am back now because I had a slip up with the internet. But thank you, Caden, for recording the rest of this video. I do really appreciate that. Since I am back, you know, here on my laptop again, we're now going to get into my number one. Everyone's number one. And now, here we go. So, I'm sure after you all have heard my honorable mentions and you've seen my top five, it's pretty obvious what my number one is going to be at this point. I know we're all thinking, but it's true. My number one is Paw Patrol, the movie. I've been yes. excited for this. I knew it! So, I am a huge, huge fan of Paw Patrol. I have Paw Patrol merchandise everywhere in my room right now. No, that's a Perfect. lie. That's a big, big a lie right there. Did you see um, the trailer I, before everyone else did? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't even seen a single episode of the show. I'm just being honest there. Um, I haven't either. But no, my, my real number one that I think everyone has expected at this point is In the Heights. Yeah, that's my number one for the summer. And I feel like considering how long I've waited for it, I think it really earns being my number one if we were to do the summer video last year um it wouldn't be number one but it would definitely be very very up high though and 
you know, you have a wonderful talent like Lynn manuel Miranda, and you just have a really great cast involved in this project. And the music just looks wonderful. I do try to avoid listening to every single song before the movie because I prefer to experience it when I actually see the movie. Once I could actually hear In the Heights the song in full, as well as all the other songs, that's just going to be very exciting. And the production on the movie just looks absolutely incredible. And the overall direction, um, who I know is from John M. Chu, just looks spectacular as well. It looks like it's going to deliver on everything I like, and not just in a musical film, since I love this genre so much, but just in the summer movie in general. So, you know, even though it was brutal waiting this long, um, a, a whole year extra long, um, I am glad it ended up being a summer movie at the end of the day, because I could just not imagine a movie like this coming out in the fall or in the spring or anything. I think summer is right where it belongs. And um, yeah, I think I've said everything I need to say, to be honest. It is why it's personally my number one for the rest of the summer, because, man, the more I think about it, the more excited I personally get. So that's definitely my number one for the entire summer of 2021. Tony, that just, that just made my night right there because I think it's pretty obvious what my number one is. You guys have been watching these Anticipate videos for a long time, and you know what a lot of the time my number one is, and it's obviously in the Heights. Um, this is a film that the second that it was announced, I was so hyped for it. lin Manuel Miranda, I've talked about this before, he is just one of the greatest talents out there. I don't know of too many... Broadway um, entertainers that have had two hit musicals that have won the majority of the awards that they've been nominated for. So that's really incredible. And I think especially coming off the heights of uh, Hamilton. The other thing I really love about it is the fact that he is so heavily involved with this still. You know, it's not like it's given to someone that has no idea what they're doing this material. No, Lynn manuel Miranda is so is still very much involved with this. He is definitely going to be there um, by John M. Chu's side to make sure that this turns out the way that he wants it to. Even giving him a, a role as the Paragua guy, I'm excited to see what that uh, really turns out to be. That but, looks like a fun role. Yeah, it seems like a lot of fun, but uh, the plot in general is one that I'm just really excited for. But I also like the way that they're adding some modern day issues to it, like gentrification um, and things like that. I think that's going to add uh, to the already really enriching story. The music of what I've heard is just absolutely spectacular. Uh, and I mean, this cast here, I really don't think you could have picked a better cast from Anthony Ramos to Melissa Barrero, who I'm so excited is is uh, getting more work after Vita. Um, Corey Hawkins, Leslie Grace, Jimmy Smith is in there. Just a really stellar cast overall. The, the costumes, the set design, the cinematography, just so many things to be hyped for. And very similar to Tony, um, I knew this was my number one pretty much because of the fact that when there were so many movies that were delayed last year, this was the one that bummed me out the most. I remember I was trying to keep hope that In the Heights would still come out, and it didn't. Uh, the majority of times I've seen this trailer uh, is honestly ridiculous at this point, but that's not that should not be a shock to anyone considering that it is a musical. The fact that I cannot see an advanced screening of it this Sunday is pissing me off, but you know what? It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine because we're finally getting it, and that's what gets me excited. The fact that it's finally coming out, and I don't have to hope that it's finally coming out. It is actually going to come out and each trailer has just been getting better and better for me. I cannot express how excited I am for this film. Absolutely, without any question whatsoever, number one in the Heights. Let's go. All righty. Um, my number one is a sequel, which is surprising, but this one looks really good. It's a sequel to a movie that was indeed very deep. That is Peter Rabbit 2, oh, the nice. runaway star yeah. James Corden oh, as what Peter Rabbit. Oh, this yeah. movie is looking awesome. No, 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 Sh shut the fuck, I'm gonna mute you, fuck this. Um, <laughs> well, I'm, a I'm actually Jackson. kidding, I'm actually uh, kidding. Uh, good, that movie good. looks like balls. Uh, the fact that anyone would say the first movie <laughs> was deep is embarrassing. I never said it was deep. deep. I just said that. <laughs> no one asked you. Hey, Kevin, you know what? Kevin, you know what? I'm with you. I think Peter Rabbit is also a deep Like, I also That's think right. Peter Rabbit's a deep film. 
My, All right, I'm glad someone's on my level, even though I never said that. It's funny that for Black Widow, I jokingly said, suck it, DC, but one of their movies is my number one. Um, hashtag release the air cut, more like, no. <laughs> this is the Suicide Squad. Um, yes. James Gunn Suicide Squad movie. If I'm being honest, um, ever since it was announced and when they started to ramp up, like here's the cast and then uh, uh, DC fandom last year, here's who they're playing. Like I haven't really been this excited for like a big blockbuster in quite a while. Um, the, the, and then the trailers of course came out and they look in, it, it, they look great. I, I loved every second of them. I have uh, big problems with the uh, David Ayer's Suicide Squad movie that we got. Not his, I guess, according to him. It's uh, WB's Suicide Squad. Um, but, you know, it's like dark and murky. Like, I, I don't mean like tone. I mean like cinematography wise. It's very hard to see. Um, it, it's got really bad jokes, really poor song placements, poorly made movie anyways. Um, but this, like already from the trailer, it's like, okay, everything is brightened up in, it seems like James Gunn, what he does best is like really embraced, like the, the goofiness, the wackiness of a lot of it, like the costumes. Oh my God, they're so comic accurate that it, I was I was smiling ear to ear, just seeing it in live action and it actually works, like it actually looks good is, is incredible. That's amazing to me. I can't wait to watch that just for that. I think the action looks a lot better. I think uh, I, I think James Gunn is going to have a much better handle on the, the filmmaking and the writing here because I was watching the featurette. I've watched the featurette from DC Bando multiple times because I was so excited. This was before trailers. And I, I think what, what makes him so great, as he mentioned in it, is that there's a certain beauty to a, uh, a good majority of these characters. And I think something he does really great with the Guardians movies is that, you know, you know, Star-Lord is funny, Rocket Raccoon is funny, Drax is hilarious, but you you get the tragicness of those characters, the, the trauma they face, like with uh, Gamora and Nebula, you know, he brings out the heart and makes you really connect with them, not just, oh, they're fun characters, like, no, I... I feel like I know these characters, you know, I can see them in people that I know um, and that I'm really excited to see him bring for these villains, these like D-list <laughs> um, villains and actually giving them a chance to shine. Like, no, like, yeah, obviously they're like a joke, but like, here's a personality for them. Here's something fun for them to do. And also here's, here's what they're all about. Like I, you can actually empathize with them and connect with them. I, I'm, I'm the most excited to see that as well as him bringing in his slither and uh, super violence. Uh, this being R rated, of course, I am extremely excited to see this movie. Uh, it looks really fun. The cast is great. I'm wondering who Taika Waititi is playing, but you know that I, I can wait for that. I'm just, I'm really excited for this movie. I'm counting down, counting down the days. Um, it, honestly, I could go on and on and on, but I'll, I'll cut myself off here. Just, uh, just know that Weasel must be protected at all costs. That fucking freak. Love you, Sean Gunn and King Shark. Can't wait for him to steal the movie along with John Cena as Peacemaker. Or will it be Harley Quinn? Or will it be Idris Elba? I don't know. There's so many people that could steal the movie. Will it be Polka Dot Man? I don't know. James Gunn said he relates to that character the most. I don't know. I'm really excited though. Um, yeah, S suck it, Suicide Squad 2016. Oh. Wait, I got a question for Jackson. What up? Are you excited to see John Cena eat an empanada? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Man, I didn't see him in that trailer, though, so I don't know. Get it? Because you can't see him. That's this. Yeah, I can't I wait know. to see a scary floating empanada. Just disappear. <laughs> Hey, hey, yes, hey, John, right. John Cena could be behind Jackson right now, and we just oh. can't see him. Wait, wait. <laughs> Who remembers John Cena's starring role in The Invisible Man? Oh, he coming wow. back? That was a classic. <laughs> um, so, uh, uh, Phil Fett, I, uh, Phil <laughs> Fett, I guess let's cut to you, my boy. Uh, um, <laughs> that's gonna be. I legitimately don't know if he's coming back. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a tough act to follow um Honestly. anyways um but oh there he is there there, there he is um uh, i'm and, glad and, jackson is safe and sound anyways uh my number one um I'm pretty sure everyone saw this a mile away. Uh, my number, it's, yeah, a mile away. You, you get uh, fast. It's, yeah, it's fast nine. Um, uh -huh. yeah. His name is John Cena. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you, 
yeah, you guys remember what I said earlier. Behind you? <laughs> yeah, you guys remember when I said John Cena makes it twice on this list? Um, yeah, this is the other time. Um, but no, in all seriousness, though, um, as you all know, the Fast and Furious franchise is like my favorite action franchise of all time. Um, I enjoy a good majority of the movies in there, especially the last few, um, you know, so I think this could be the best one, honestly, like this looks like they're taking the insanity and just upping it to the, the 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, like they are just like Space going baby. all out with, what'd you say? Space baby. I was about to mention that. I'll mention that in a second, but I, it just seems like they're just up in the ante with this. This is like everything I could have possibly wanted for for an installment for this movie. Like John Cena, Hans coming back. Like, come on, they're going to space. Like, bro, this this is like this is literally a film fan 0599 movie. This is like if you were to ever describe a film fan 0599 movie, this would be it. This would be it right here. Fast Nine would be that movie. Like, it just seems so bonkers and so insane. Like, it just seems like everything that I love about the franchise is culminating into this, and I'm very excited about it like I, i'm just i'm just so hyped like that ending with tyrese and Ludacris going to fucking space like bro i need that shit in my life immediately like i am so hyped to see this like it is easily my most anticipated of the entire summer and uh yeah I, i'm just looking forward to just have the time of my life with this so yeah fast nine is my number one all right it's time for my number one, y'all. And it is not Peter Rabbit 2, motherfuckers. Is, All right. It looks my amazing. number one. It's a deep I'm, film. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I am not. Shut up. So my number one. I'm I'm going, I'm I'm just I'm gonna say before I say it, I am surprised I am the only person. That is, I assume is going to mention that this movie is a thing because, like, I'm I'm just surprised because I thought our people would mention it. But my number one is my most anticipated movie of the whole year: The Beatles Get Back. By far, my number one most anticipated film for the year. If people don't know what this is, this is the Peter Jackson recut of the Beatles Let It Be documentary. Basically, back in 1970. I think that I remember when I came out in 1971. Basically, back in 1969, uh, when the Beatles were working on their album, Let It Be, um, because people, some people don't know this, but Abbey Road is technically the last, it is, it is the last Beatles album, which is like insane because it's one of the greatest albums of all time. But Let It Be came out after. It was kind of because it was like a very like rough session. So, but it came out in 1970 and there's a lot of controversy with it because like, Phil Spector was involved and it just, it just became a fucking mess. Uh, but in 1969, when they were recording it before they recorded Abbey Road, they had a documentary crew and they had people filming all the sessions for it. To, for like a documentary, basically, just like just, just to film the sessions. You know, it, it's sort of like with like The Last Dance last year where they had like a film crew like filming everything during that final season of the Bulls Dynasty and stuff, their second repeat. So it's kind of like that. But the thing with the Let It Be sessions is that it's so interesting. It's all those interesting Beatles um, eras is because the Let It Be sessions were the most like intense se sessions they had, and there was like a few moments where they would like be like arguing, arguing with each other, was like calling, they'd be like arguing and stuff, and figure out where they were gonna go with the band because there was already a lot of like conflicts going on and stuff, you know, of like John and like Paul's relationship. There was just like a lot like going on with that. And the documentary that they filmed captured that. But the problem is that the one that came out in the 70s after the album came out, they cut out like a ton of that stuff. So it's kind of like a cookie cutter sort of cut of it. Um, and it's not easily accessible too. So um, the footage has, that has been sitting basically in vaults for like decades now. And uh, the 50th anniversary of Let It Be, the album was last year. Um, and the film was going to come out last year also, but it got delayed, obviously. So it's like 51 years now, whatever. And a few years ago, um, Peter Jackson started getting into like the documentary stuff. Um, and they hired him basically to put so to put this together. So he's like technically directing this. It's, he's just like cutting it all together now. Uh, so they went back and they remastered all the 35 millimeter footage. And it's like a new like recut of all the footage together. Um, and it's and Disney's distributing it. And like, honestly, my only concern about this is that it looks like there is some DNR on it because it does look a bit soft, the image stuff, which 
Peter Jackson's kind of getting into that DNR thing, which I'm not happy about. But, you know, besides that, that's like my only nitpick, my only like concern. But like everything about it looked like what I wanted it to be. It's like that, like it's like that, it's like that raw feeling of being in a studio session, you know, of all four of the Beatles. Like the thing that's crazy about it is regardless of the fact that this is like one of like the like not like it's not it's not one of their best works by any means, let it be. But the fact that like we have all this footage that's being recut together into one like feature length film now when it's like raw session footage of the fucking Beatles. Like regardless of if you don't like the Beatles, um, like this is the Beatles at the end of the day. So the fact that like we have this much footage of them recording an album is like insane. Um, and this also features like footage um, from like professionally filmed footage uh, from the Apple Corps uh, concert, which is the last like official concert the Beatles did on the rooftop of Apple Corps. I already have plans to uh, go see it in New York actually with my best friend Vade, who's like a massive Beatles fan. And I'm extremely excited for that. On um, the funny thing too, is this comes out, I think August 27th. So it's like the last, it's like weekend of the summer season. I was really disappointed when it got pushed back last year. I understood why, but I'm just super excited that this is going to be in theaters and you know, it's like a way to celebrate the Beatles of people again. I think Peter Jackson is still an excellent director. Um, and I trust him with this stuff. So, cause I know what Peter Jackson, he is very, hardworking and meticulous and stuff especially when you have all this Beatles footage and the restoration process which you care so much about like I, I can't wait so that is why the Beatles get back is my number one and is my most anticipated film of the whole year so uh yeah my number one pick is a little risky because it was my most anticipated movie of last year but it got delayed and currently it actually doesn't have a release date but fuck it I'm I still think it'll come out this summer. If it doesn't, I'll come back and talk about it in the fall. And that is Wes Anderson's The French Dispatch. Yeah. 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 Wes Anderson was like one of the first directors who like I started watching his movies and that made me want to like get into like movies and stuff. So he'll always have a special place in my heart. And this movie looks excellent. Like the trailer came out last February and I had it on on repeat. We got Adrian Brody, Tilda Swinton, Francis McDormand, Timothy Chalamet, Bill Murray, Elizabeth Moss, Edward Norton, Willem Dafoe, and Saoirse Ronan to name a few. The black and white color transitions looked really cool. So yeah. Fingers crossed it does come out this summer. All right. Uh, my number one is uh, In the Heights. I'm a big fan of musicals, especially uh, I became a big fan of uh, Lynn Muel Miranda after watching Hamilton last year. It's clearly he has such a passion and uh, for uh, just what he does and just has such a mind and talent for what he does that, you know, like now that I was already excited but before I. I, I became a fan of him, but like after, you know, now uh, I'm even more excited. Um, it, this just looks fantastic. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up being one of the, my be uh, favorite movies of the year. Um, and yeah, uh, I'll keep it short and sweet. I'm tired. I want to go to bed. All right, everyone. That was our top five anticipated movies for summer uh, 2021 <laughs> films. Oh my God, Henry. Um, but so yeah, thank, thank you so much to everyone for watching this video and for listening to what my guests, you know, what my guests' picks are for like their most anticipated. Uh, like I said, it just feels really genuinely good to be doing this again. It feels unreal to just even be bringing back this segment because, um, you know, thankfully, even though there's still certain movies, like, for example, I didn't put the French Dispatch just because I wasn't sure if it was kind of the summer. But if it is, you know, consider that in my honorable mentions, at least. But if not, um, hopefully I can talk about it when we can hopefully do our fall winter video together. Um, but yeah, of course, before I let everyone go, I'm going to let everyone give their intros one by one, starting off with Kevin Folk.
Uh, this was so much fun to do again, honestly. I love the fact that we were able to come on here and actually have movies to look forward to this time around and not, you know, think about the possibility of them not coming out or getting delayed or something like that. It was just really great to get to talk about this. This is always a lot of fun to do, especially when Jackson mocks me. I really appreciate that as well. That's always a, a lot of fun. But uh, no, in general, uh, of course, thank you for having me on. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you guys know where to find me. My YouTube's there. Twitter's there, wherever Tony puts it. And uh, yeah, I uh, hope this is a, a really good summer for movies and hoping we can finally get back to, you know, big releases coming back to movie theaters because that's been a foreign concept uh, for, for far too long. So I'm glad to see things are slowly starting to get back to normal. Man, that outro took a minute. Um... Thanks for having me on. It's really great to do this again. Uh, remember Stan Weasel from the Suicide Squad and not Peter Rabbit because he's not a deep character in a motion picture. Uh, I like, never said that. Hey, shut up. No one if, you like, <laughs> if, if you liked me here for whatever reason, you can follow me on my YouTube. It's just my name. Uh, or you can go follow me on Twitter. I just retweet stuff I agree with. Or follow me on Letterboxd. IDK fam, it's really up to you. Watch out uh, for John Cena. I'm not getting out of this chair again. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyways, um, yeah, uh, it was great doing this again. Um, I miss doing this John a Cena, lot. Is that you? Uh, um, I miss doing this a lot, um, you know, so it was great to finally come back on here and uh, talk about my most anticipated movies of the summer season. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, so uh, thank you, Tony, for gathering us up again. Um, and uh, yeah, well, you can find me on my uh, on the YouTubes, the Twitters, and the TikToks at FilmFan0599. Um, and you can find me on my Larabox WWE Fan0599 because Larabox won't let me change the username. Um, but uh, yeah, um, you can find me on all that jazz and all that. Um, thank you once again, Tony, for having me on, and uh, I had a good time. Yeah, we don't get to do any segues. <laughs> well, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it, Mr. Uh, Tiger Dude 22 to the Tiger. And uh, yeah, no, if, if y'all want to y- y- look me up or follow me for, for whatever reason, um, you, you can find me on the YouTubes at Auburn Wanderer and on other places that you might want to find me. Uh, and uh, yeah, thank you for having me on. And um, yeah, um, yeah, and I, I just want to quickly say also, uh, God bless us all uh, for the impending doom that is called Peter Rabbit to the Runaway. So uh, yeah, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. You're just you're just a hater, even though I'm also kind of dreading it because <laughs> it looks like shit. All right, here's the kissing move three. The obviously the most. Now that's the film that we should be preparing ourselves for. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you pony estrada for having me on you're you can, welcome my man you can follow me on twitter at henzo ewing you can follow me on letterbox i just got pro so i finally changed my 15 year old self's edgy username <laughs> <laughs> it's now act- my actual name henry ewing and I've said it before, but I apparently I need to say it again. Don't follow me in real life. That shit's fucking weird. Yes. Keep it up with the streak from the Oscars video. Listen, oh, um, I, add you, add you. <laughs> yes. So I, I, I just realized I am in some weird way anticipating the kissing booth three. I'm anticipating it to be over. Um, so no, uh, I'm legitimately yes. anticipating it. If I'm gonna be honest, for the meme, <laughs> anticipating it greatly. Um oh, yeah, Jackson, I'm so excited. Just, I'm so excited. Just remember Wait, Andrew, did you watch two? Yes. Oh. Just know. remember, guys. I've already made no, the cast of that. No, no <laughs> boobs are worth a broken nose. Um uh, <laughs> that's <I> also, right. <laughs> um also uh, just that. remember oh, uh shit. these nuts and uh the holler if you hear me. Holler. Period. I'm deaf. I can't hear you. I can barely <coughs> look at Henry Sting. <laughs> These notes.
All right, everyone. That'll do it. Hope you have a good day. Good night. Whenever you're watching this, this is 22 Tiger Dude with Film Fan, Kevin, Jackson, Henry, Caden, and Andrew. And don't forget, as I stand, Zombie Tiger from Army of the Dead, we will always have... Tiger. 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 It's even going to be worse over Zoom. Uh, <laughs> All right. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. As a great man once said, go the fuck to bed. <laughs> <Love that. laughs>